Hello and welcome to this Code Rage quick talk on how to build a secure multi-device application using the Interbase to Go database. My name is Al Manorino and I'm one of the Embarcadero software consultants. During this Code Rage quick talk we'll show how to add both database and column level encryption to an Interbase database and then use that same database as an embedded Interbase to Go database in a secure multi-device application built using RAD Studio. With the Interbase database, we can encrypt the entire database. Encrypting the database with strong AES 256-bit encryption encrypts all of the database pages that contain user information. Now that we have our column level key for encryptions, we can do column level encryptions. So we want to add column level encryption to the salary column of the employee table. So we select the employee table and looking at the table, we see that we have a salary column. So we want this salary column to be more secure so that not everyone that has access to the database can see salary information. So we select the salary column and we select alter selected item. This brings up the table editor where we can select the salary column and select edit field. This brings up the field property editor and from here select column level key for the encryption that we created earlier by the sysdso. Now there's also a decrypt default property. We will set that value to zero. So whenever a user without decrypt permissions selects from that column, rather than getting an error or no permission for decrypt access for column salary, they will get the default decrypt value of zero in this case. Next, now that we have our Interbase to Go activation license file and our Interbase to Go database file, let's see how to build a secure multi device application using this embedded Interbase to Go database. Now that we have our Interbase to Go deployment license, let's look at how to build a secure multi device application using RAD Studio C Builder and our Interbase to Go database that we just created with both database and column level encryptions. We created this app starting with a new multi device application C Builder tabbed application, which gave us these four tabs to start with. This Interbase to Go application shows embedded user security and encryption to manage access to private data. Along with being password protected, the data is also encrypted on disk to prevent reading the database file for clear text. The app has two users embedded in the database. We have a human resource employee and we have a new employee. The human resource employee is allowed to see the employee's salary column, but the new employee is not. This is because we added decrypt permissions to the salary column for the human resource employee, but the new employee does not have decrypt permissions to the salary column, but instead will get a default value of zero for salary. Using two different connections to the database, we can show what you get to see when connected to our embedded Interbase to Go database that has both database and column level encryption. Now, an Interbase to Go application can use FireDAC, DB Express, or Interbase Express components to build Interbase to Go applications. This application is using FireDAC to connect to Interbase to Go database. We have two FireDAC connections to our encrypted Interbase to Go database. One is called FireDAC Connection HR, and this is connected to our employee encrypted database. 
for the HR connection, we pass in the username and the password for the human resource user that has decrypt permissions on the salary column. And the FireDAC connection for the new employee connects to the same encrypted employee database, but has the username and password for the new employee user that does not have decrypt permissions on the salary column. Let me run this application as a 32-bit Windows application and we'll see what it does. Then we'll come back and take a deeper look into the code. So here's our application running as a Windows 32-bit application. The info tab has information on what the application does displayed in two memo components. The database tab lets us connect to the database as the human resource employee and as the new employee at the same time. The human resource connection connects as the HR employee user and the employee connection connects as the new employee user. Selecting the HR department tab, we see the full name of our employees and the salary of the employees because recall we gave the HR employee decrypt permission on the salary column but when, but when we select the employee tab we see the full name of the employees and we see zero as the default value for salary because the new employee user does not have decrypt permissions on the salary column so all of this is working correctly and it's using our embedded interbase to go database with both database and column level encryptions. This app also uses two Fire DAC query components. So if we look at the Fire DAC query component for the human resource user, it has the query select full name salary from the employee. And when we execute this query, because it's using the username and password of the human resource user he or she gets to see the salary information because the human resource user has decrypt permissions on the salary column so that works great if we look at the fire DAC query for the new employee it's the same query we are running but in this case when we execute this query because the we are passing in the username and password of the new employee who does not have decrypt permissions on the salary column. So instead of getting salary data, instead we get the default value of zero that we set when we created the column level encryption for the, col for the salary column. So all of this is working great. Looking at the on switch event for the T switch for the human resource employee, we see that we are setting the property for the username and the password for the FireDAC connection to be the human resource employee. And we're also setting the FireDAC query for the human resource user to be active. And we do the same thing for the switch for the new employee. We set the property username and password of the FireDAC connection to be the new employee and we also set the fire DAC query for the new employee to be active also. To, de to define the location of our interbase to go database on mobile devices, we are using the forms on create event. So if we are not running the application on Windows, then we are using the tpath get documents path to return the path to the directory where the user documents are stored slash interbase slash the name of our interbase to go database. On Android the tpath get documents path returns the Android documents folder which is dot slash assets slash internal. 
And for iOS devices, the TPath Get Documents path returns the iOS documents folder, which is startup slash documents. And this is where mobile devices will look for to find the Interbase to go database. So up to this point, we have been using Interbase on our desktop. This means that the actual database is located on your local hard drive. On mobile devices, the application is sandboxed. And typically, you can only read and write data that is located in the Documents folder for an iOS device and internal storage for an Android device under your application folder. So to connect to a local database on mobile, we need to perform a few actions. So let me show you what those actions are. For our mobile devices, we need to deploy both our Interbase to Go database and our Interbase to Go license file. To make this easy for us, we can use project deployment and we can select all configurations Android platform we can use the add files button to add both our interbase to go database file and our interbase to go license file here we added our interbase to go database file and for the remote path on our mobile device we set it to Android's documents folder which is the internal storage location for Android which is dot slash assets slash internal and we do the same for our interbase to go license file and we give it the same remote path of dot slash assets slash internal and we could also use the deployment managers add featured files button which gives us a nested list of database drivers and libraries that can be added to the deployment list and similar for iOS devices either iOS 32-bit platform or iOS device 64-bit platform here we do the same thing the interbase to go database file gets deployed on the remote path to the iOS device documents folder using the remote path which is startup slash documents and we do the same thing for the interbase to go license file deploy it on the iOS device to the remote path which is the iOS documents folder which is startup slash documents so those are the files that need to be deployed on the mobile devices to allow you to use interbase to go with its license file on mobile devices iOS and Android to display our database values on our mobile devices if I go back to the design tab and I bring up my layout if we look at the HR depart department tab here we see we are using a list view aligned to the client to display the values from our employee table and using visual live bindings we see that we take the results from our fire that query the fire that query for the uh, human resource employee and the full name column will get displayed on the list view in its item dot text property and the salary column will get displayed on the item detail property and we do the same thing for the employee tab the full name of the fire deck query will get displayed on the item dot text property of the list view and the salary column will get displayed on the item dot detail property of the list view now let's take the same application we ran on a 32-bit Windows application and build and deploy it to an Android device and we'll run it on an Android device just to see that it works exactly the same way so I selected my Android as a target platform project I will build all projects 
So the same application we built as a 32-bit Windows application without making any code changes, we are now creating an Android version of the same application. Uh, the build will create the Android APK file that we can load into an Android device and we can run it on an Android device and see that it, and see that it works the same as our 32-bit Windows application. So the project has been built, now we can load the APK file to an Android device. So here is my C++ builder uh, interbase to go uh, encryption application deployed on my Android Nexus 7 tablet. Let me tap, let me tap on its icon to start it. So it brings up the app with the first tab of info which gives us information about what the application does. So next I'll tap on the database tab and here's where we can connect as the human resource employee and also connect as the new employee so now we have two connections to the same interbase to go database embedded on this Android device so that's cool so now when I select the human resource department tab we see that we get our full name of our employees and we also get salary information because recall we gave the human resource employee decrypt privileges on the salary column so he and she can see the salary information but when I select the employee tab uh, the new employee does not get salary information because we did not give the new employee user decrypt privileges on the salary column instead they get to see a default value of zero so all of this is working great also on an Android device and also using our embedded interbase to go database with both database and column level encryption so all of this is working great this ends this code rage quick talk so we saw how you can add both database level encryption and column level encryption to an interbase to go database and then we saw how you can build a secure multi-device application using the embedded interbase to go database that had both database level and column level encryption